Welcome to this week's sermon from Spark. We are a community who believes we are deeply loved by God and seek to welcome, support, love, and serve every person we meet. We hope this message has something for you today. All right. Thank you so much for dancing and praising God this morning. It's good to see some of that. So we've been talking about resurrection. We started this new series last week. Who can tell me what resurrection means? What's that word mean? To rise again, new life, to come back to life, to come and have new life, right? And so we are going to be talking about some different stories where people experience kind of everyday resurrections. But today, we're going to be talking about someone who was literally brought back to life. And that person is Lazarus. And Lazarus was a good friend of Jesus. Lazarus had two sisters, Mary and Martha. And there are a couple of times in Scripture where Jesus visits their house. And so that's how we know that Jesus was good friends with this particular family. And so we're going to hear what happened to Lazarus this morning. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb, which means he had died, for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me, do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And when she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw that Mary got up quickly, go out, and they decided to follow her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again greatly it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the him, Lord, already there is a stench because it has been four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth, and Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. So we hear the story of Lazarus, which is one of my personal favorite um, scriptures because for many reasons, but today we're going to focus on one of those reasons. And when we read this passage, we might look at it and have a few questions. Sir with the ribbon. Can you put it where I asked you to put it? Thank you. We might have a few questions, right? Because there's, if we were to play this out, if we were to act out this scene, there are a couple of details that maybe um, the writer left out, if we were to read it like a screenplay. And one of the things that is right at the very end is when Jesus calls out, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus comes out. And then we hear this detail that Lazarus is 
inherently bound hand and foot, right? So in my logical brain, I'm going, but then how do you come out the tomb, right? Like if you've got your arms and your legs kind of bound together, was he like hopping out the tomb? Did he just kind of like roll out? Like how did Lazarus just like get up out the tomb, right? But really that's not the important detail there. But what we know about where Lazarus was buried is that he was in a cave, right? And so we can imagine kind of a cave entrance, and it wouldn't have been very tall. It wouldn't have been as tall as me. So people had had to duck a little bit to get in. And when you were in, there would have been a bench-type stone where they would have laid the body. And so Lazarus would have been just chilling in there when Jesus had them roll away the stone and then said, come out. And so maybe Lazarus kind of, you know, like swung his feet over and was able to kind of hobble his way up to the entrance of the cave, but we know that his movement had to have been really restricted because very quickly after he gets to the entrance, Jesus says to all those that are gathered, go and untie him, right? Because he can't move the way that he needs to move. And as I read this passage, I think about us, about myself, about the people that I know, and I can see how Many of us are like Lazarus when he first comes up out the tomb. That we are bound, that we are wrapped up in things that are not of God and that hinder us from living the way that God called us to live. And so I want us to think for a minute what are some of the things that bind us? What are some of the things that keep us from living our life fully? Does anyone have any ideas? Depression, right? So some of us struggle with different mental health struggles, and those can keep us from living more fully. Any other ideas? Yeah. Sadness. So some of us maybe are grieving things that we've lost or people we've lost or are sad about something that's happened in our life, and so we're stuck with that, I might regret tying this behind me later, but that's okay. We're going to do it. What else? Death. Death. So like losing someone you love. I'm going to do a smaller one. All right. What else? Sir. Oh, Okay. So when we're, like, unwilling to listen to other people or let other people in, we get bound up. We could add anger can keep us stuck. Fear can keep us stuck. Distrust of other people can get, keep us stuck. Our past can keep us stuck. Right? So... It says that Lazarus would have had strips of cloth tied around him. And this was a way that they prepared bodies for burial, right? That they would have bound them up. So Lazarus comes up out of the tomb like this. I can move if I really want to, right? I can get places if I really want to. I should not hop too much because then my legs might get tired and I'll fall over. But... This is not how I'm meant to live, right? Am I meant to live my life where I can't take even a complete step forward? No. But we have these things in our lives. Some of them happen to us, right? We don't choose this. They happen to us and they bind us. Other things we do kind of choose or take on, and so we wrap them tightly around us. And these are grave clothes. They're clothes that are meant for people who aren't alive anymore, They're not meant for people who are up walking around doing their day-to-day tasks and trying to be the people that God calls us to be, to love ourselves and to love our neighbors. And so often, we walk around with these and we don't even really realize that we have them on. We don't even really realize that we're so bound up in anger that it affects our day-to-day life, that we are so mistrusting of other people that we won't let anyone in and that that's hindering us from the kind of freedom that God is calling us to have. And some of this is because we've chosen it, and some of it is because of the circumstances that have been dealt to us. 
But a lot of times, I will say, it's because God offers us this freedom. So God calls us up out of the cave, right? But we have to recognize that we're still bound by these things. We have to let go of them. We have to let them be. And so often we carry them around because we feel like maybe we're not deserving of the kind of freedom that God gives us. I know many of us in this room might hold grudges or carry regrets. And so we hang on to those things and we carry them around even when God has already offered us forgiveness. That we won't forgive ourselves. I know I was like that for a long time. That I wouldn't forgive myself for things that I had done or said because I just couldn't believe that I could move on afterwards, right? So we're bound by these things. They keep us from living the way that God calls us to live, but we know and we celebrate it on Easter that God offers us redemption, that when we choose to follow God and we choose to live a life that's honoring God, when we come here on church and we pray and we choose to be a Christian, that these things disappear, that we are made clean and new and we're given new life, that we are brought up out of the cave and the tomb, but we forget to untie the grave clothes. We still walk around like little zombie people, right? Instead of living in the freedom that God has called us to live into. And last week we talked about that because a lot of times we don't feel like we're worthy of it. And we, we talked about how God doesn't operate in the human condition um, of worthiness, right? That that's something that humans made up. That God only wants our belief our heart, our faith. And so we hobble around all the time instead of accepting this new life. And or we accept this new life, but the new life that we think God has offered to us is really the way things used to be. You know what I'm talking about? Like when you break a plate on the ground and you try your hardest to super glue it back together, it looks exactly like the plate that it once looked like. And we're like, okay, but we know that that plate is never going to be exactly the same, right? There's going to be cracks and there might be a little chip missing. And so God's saying that we don't need to put the plate back together, that we can take all the pieces and we can make something new, something that we can't even imagine. And that's why we have talked about the image of stained glass, right? That God takes all those broken things and makes something new. It doesn't take it back to where it was before. And I know so many of us who come to this place come hoping for things to be restored back to the way they were before. But guess what, friends? The things that were happening before were broken. And that's oftentimes why we find ourselves here. And so what we need to do is to have the courage and the strength to go into something new. But instead, we can be like Lazarus and just hang out in our little cave, right? Because it's much more comfortable in the cave. We know what the cave looks like. We can scratch our little days off on the cave. We got our nice little bedrock on the cave. We know what the cave looks like, and it's comfortable. And going out of the cave is scary because we don't know exactly what lies out there. But at least here, even if it's not perfect, even if I have to live my life in this tiny little cave, that's fine, God, because at least I know what's going on here. But we can have the faith that if we step out, that God has something even bigger and better than we could have imagined. Lazarus' life after he came back to life wasn't the same as it was before he died and came back to life. He spent a lot of his time traveling around and telling people about Jesus and how Jesus raised him from the dead. So much so that some people wanted to kill him because they were worried and threatened by this person who was literally a living testimony to what Jesus could do. His life was different from that moment forward. And so when we're given new life, we're not given the new old life, we're given a new, new life. A life to move forward into, to experience healing in. And it says that Lazarus was untied by the people around him. That when Jesus says, untie him, he doesn't just look at Lazarus and be like, figure it out, bro. Like, you got your hands all tied up and try to untie yourself. He says to the people around him, go and unbind him. And so I wonder how many of us gathered here 
have not allowed other people to untie us. Maybe since coming here, you've had a therapist or a house parent or a rec staff or a chapel staff offer you some sort of advice or a way to talk or process something, and you've just completely shut them out because you're unwilling to allow them to untie the binds that are holding you captive. And I'm not saying that that's not something that's understandable because I know many of us in this room have had a lot of people that have broken our trust over the course of our lifetime. Amen? So we can't just let anybody in, right? But we have to let some people in. And we have to learn who to trust. Because God may be placing them in your life to help unbind these things so that you don't have to do all of that work by yourself. And maybe you're sitting here and you're listening to this and you're like, Pastor Madeline, I don't really know that I'm bound by anything. And I would probably say maybe you're just not aware of it yet or you don't want to admit it yet. But if you are listening to this and you're like, I don't know that I'm bound up by anything. I think I'm pretty free. I would say then it's our job to be the people that untie our friends from their bindings. Our calling today could be hearing Jesus say, unbind him or her, right? To our friends who are holding grudges, to our friends who only speak poorly about themselves, to our friends who are stuck into some image of what their life should look like that's not of God or not good or not healthy, that we can be the people who unbind them. Because God ultimately does not want us to live like this, right? He didn't want Lazarus to live like that, walking around like a zombie. So why would he want us to live like that? We have to allow God and allow others and allow ourselves to be free Ooh, after staying there for a while, that feels really good. To be able to dance and move and sing and laugh and be free from all of those things, the anger, the distrust, the sadness, the fear. Because some of those things we need for a little bit of time. Sometimes we are a little angry. Sometimes we, are, we do need to know who to trust. But we are never meant to live entirely in those places. And so we have to allow other people to help unbind us to be free. And that's our challenge today, friends, is to acknowledge those things that are keeping us stuck, that are not allowing us to take a full step forward, and then to allow those bindings to fall apart. Because we're not meant to live in our grave clothes. You all are very much alive, last time I checked. So we're not meant to walk around in grave clothes. Amen? Let's pray. God, I pray by your Holy Spirit that you would speak into the hearts and minds of each person gathered here, that they would come to know and understand those things in their life which are binding them, that are keeping them from healing, from joy, from living life to its fullest the way that you have called us to live, to love ourselves and to love our neighbor. And God, I pray that we would be people of courage and of strength who would be willing to allow others to untie the things that bind us and to be that helpful neighbor to our friends who need that same help as well. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about our ministry, follow the link in the description below. Peace be with you. Hallelujah.